What's up everybody, I'm Josh Meek, the Uber Geek. Welcome to Pretty Dece, your daily entertainment and pop culture show. We're talking video game news today. Nintendo announced this week that they are putting out a couple new outfits for Super Mario Odyssey. Of course, Odyssey is a game that they have supported fairly well since it has released. They put out outfits here and there. They put out the new Luigi Balloon Hunt mode. And of course, Odyssey as a base game is absolutely fantastic. Now, we might not normally talk about new outfits that are coming out for Odyssey, but the two outfits they're putting out now actually kind of harken back to some interesting points and interesting uh, peer time periods for Nintendo and the history of Nintendo. So I wanted to point those out to you because, because they're so cool. So the first outfit is a baseball outfit, uh, it, it fully including a batting helmet. Mario is in full-on baseball mode. And, you know, this, this fits in with the rest of the game. We have Mario in all kinds of different uh, outfits, doing all kinds of different jobs in, in those outfits. So it, it fits in the game very well. However, the, the colors of the baseball outfit and just the fact that it is a baseball outfit um, kind of reminds you, harkens back to a period of Nintendo's history you might not know about. And that is when they were the majority owners of the Seattle Mariners. Yes, for many years, Nintendo owned a Major League Baseball team. Uh, the, the former president of Nintendo bought the team in 1992 and then transferred his stake in, in the team to Nintendo in 2004. The Mariners were actually the first Major League Baseball team with non-North American ownership uh, in, in the president and, and Nintendo there. And they, they sold the team in 2016, made a very healthy profit on the team. And while they owned the team, you know, were, were wonderful stewards of, of the team is, is what everyone uh, thinks, the general opinion of Nintendo as baseball team owners. And they actually still maintain a 10% ownership in the, the Mariners ownership group. So they're still somewhat involved in baseball, but not to the extent that they were during that time period. But it's certainly a very interesting point in Nintendo's history and that most people don't know about. So this baseball outfit kind of, you know, harkens back to that a little bit. Now, the second outfit is a much more direct link to a time period in Nintendo's history and a device from Nintendo's history. This is the Satellaview suit and helmet for Mario. And when you look at it, it's this kind of weird retro looking space suit. It's kind of shiny and, and colorful. And it could just be an interesting design they came up with for the game. But it's a little bit more than that. You see, the Satellaview was a Japanese-only add-on for the Super Famicom, which is the Japanese version of the Super Nintendo. It stuck onto the bottom of the Super Famicom, you hooked it all up, and it was a satellite modem. So it lets you download and play games and other content via a satellite connection. It launched in 1995, and, and never made it outside of Japan. It was very dependent on services, satellite services that were happening in Japan. And even in Japan, it never really took off. Um, it, was, it was, some might say, a little bit ahead of its time and also somewhat limited by just the, the technology uh, you know, realities of its time as well. But it served up games. It also served up digital magazines, audio dramas, and every single day had a schedule of content. So for example, you might get magazines for a couple hours, then it might move over to like SoundLink broadcasts, these audio dramas that were live. You had to be online at a very specific time to see them. It was actually like live audio that was, that was getting broadcast to your console. And then, then they might move on later to games. So every single day you had to be online at certain times if you wanted to hit certain content. So it was just like a television station in that regard. If you miss your specific game or program that you wanted to play, then yeah, you were out of luck. You had to come back a different time or maybe you just missed it entirely. When you actually look at the Satellaview, which is super hard, of course, to, to even see right now, we can mostly know what it was like through, through old videos. 
Um, it was really crazy. There was a hub world that you were able to, to run around in. There was this city. You were this little character that you named and, and, and chose uh, the, the gender of before you went into the game. And each building in the city was a game or piece of content that you could get on a certain schedule. So, so you might show up to the building and it would say, ah, we're not open yet, come back in an hour. Um, and you know, parts of these games, they, they, they were delivering audio that the Super Nintendo couldn't do on its own. So it was live audio being transmitted to your device. So you had to be online to play this game at this hour along with everyone else so you could hear the, you know, spoken dialogue or the orchestral score or, or, you know, whatever it might be for that game. So obviously that's a huge limitation, but how cool is that? They're, they're pulling so much out of the Super Nintendo. They're doing so much with it that was so far ahead of its time. Things we wouldn't see in games for years after that, voice acting like that. Uh, uh, super, super cool stuff. And lots of your favorite franchises had specific versions of games made just for the Satellaview that, again, will never be able to, to really play in their normal, natural form. So a weird piece of history there in, in the backstory of Nintendo. Sega actually had something very similar with the Sega channel for the Genesis that actually did come out in the States and a very similar thing. You had to connect to the internet, download games, games changed over time. So if you missed downloading a specific one, it was gone forever. Um, it was something that, yeah, it just kind of needed a few more years. The technology needed, needed to progress a bit farther for something like that to really be viable. So two very interesting pieces of time in Nintendo's history, owning a baseball team and running this satellite uh, weird download service for magazines and audio broadcasts and video games. Both of them represented now in the Super Mario Odyssey game as new costumes being added. Very, very cool stuff. So that's going to do it for Pretty Dece for today. Thanks very much for joining me. Make sure that you like Pretty Dece on Facebook, facebook.com slash Pretty Dece Show. Follow me on Twitter at Pretty Dece Show. And of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can find that at prettydeceshow.com slash video. And of course, subscribe to the podcast as well. You can find it wherever podcasts are delivered to you. And, uh, and even on Spotify now, that is a new addition. So make sure you subscribe in all those places and like and favorite so you never miss any of the content.